jelly. This is Search Out Science, and we are the SOS crew. All right. Now, this is my patch. Oh. And I think that you two have got experiments to set up. Have we got experiments to set up? Of course, Mr. Phil. Go away and set them up. Thank you. Now, we're talking about lights today, and studios are full of signs, signals, and flashing lights. And if you were sitting where I am, this is what you'd see. Three cameras, one, two, three, and a TV screen over there, which shows me what you're looking at. Now, I know when the director changes camera because the red light tells me which camera it's being used, like this. I'm on three here, jump to two, back to three, one. Directors try to catch people out sometimes, but I'm on three now. And it's vital information for me, given in a very simple way. Now, if you think about it, we're always using lights to give messages, and the streets are absolutely full of them. Each of these lights is telling you something. But what are they saying? If you didn't know what they meant, you'd better find out. Otherwise, you'll be a danger on the road. What did we do before electric lights? We used to use fire. And here's some fire. So what's burning? Is it the wick in the middle? Or is it the wax you can see dripping down the outside? And how do you think you could find out? Well, nowadays, of course, we don't use candles to light our homes, except in a power cut but they are still used in some places where they have a very special meaning. This is a church where lighting candles has its own religious meaning. These are divas and they're used in the Hindu religion. Now, they still have a wick, but instead of the wick dipping into wax, it dips into ghee, and ghee is made out of butter. Now, we can make one of these ourselves. Use an earthenware pot, but actually I'm going to use a glass dish because I can see what's happening better. I'm going to pour water into about half, three quarters full, like that, and then top it up with not butter, but cooking oil, because it's easier. And right to the top, like that. Okay, next I'm going to use a milk bottle top and make a small hole in it. And of course now I'm going to need a wick. And for my wick I'm going to have a little bit of string with a knot at one end and then I'm going to try threading it through the hole. Which is not always easy, especially when you've got oil all over your fingers. Let me try making the hole a little bigger. Right. There you go. Now I need to float the milk bottle top carefully on the surface of the oil, like that. Now the reason I have a little knot at the bottom is to stop any oil from leaking through the hole and actually sinking everything. And I'm going to have to wait a while before lighting it so that the wick can actually absorb some of the oil. You could try experimenting, by the way, with different materials for the wick to see which one works the best. For example, some knitting wool or even some cotton wool. Just make sure that it's actually thin enough to go through the hole, which can be a little bit of a job. Right, well, here I have one which has been soaking for quite some time. So we'll try lighting that to it. Oh, the wick should have had enough time to soak up oil. And perhaps if Carmen could dip the lights. There we are. One homemade diva. Thank you, Carmen.
Just imagine, we used to light all our streets like this. These are gas lamps. Think of all the hassle of having to go round the town, lighting all these in the dark. Nowadays, though, we don't use gas for its light. We use it mainly for its heat, for cooking and heating buildings. But there's still one famous occasion when its light is a message to everyone who sees it. The Olympic Flame. That's burning gas. Now, this is the sort of light that we're all used to. Just take a look inside this ordinary household electric light bulb. What we've got here is a coil, which is a bit like the kind of thing you'd find inside an electric fire. But it's so hot that it's not just glowing red hot, but white hot. To make it work, what you need is the two wires coming down from either end of the coil and some electricity. But I don't want to muck about with all this household electricity. So what I've got over here is a battery version, which is a bit safer to show you what's going on. It's exactly the same, though. Here's the two wires coming from the bulb, and here's the electricity in the battery. Now, all I have to do is connect up the battery to the bulb and complete the circuit, and there we are. The bulb comes on. Of course, usually, if you want to switch a bulb on and off, you use a switch. So here's one that you can make for yourself. It's just made from some drawing pins and some paper clips and some wire, and it's exactly the same. Here's the two wires coming around like this, and here's the battery with the electricity. But here, the paper clip's been bent away from the drawing pin so that the circuit is broken. So if I just push it down and complete the circuit, the bulb comes on. Lift up, circuit breaks, goes off. On, off. On, off. Ever been to London? Well, if you have, you've probably been here. Piccadilly Circus. It's full of lights spelling out lots of messages. Amazing what you can do with a few hundred light bulbs. We even managed to get our own advert up in lights. Not with hundreds of bulbs, but with thousands of them, all turned on and off by a computer. It all started with our SOS picture and Anne, who programmed the computer. And once I've got the image, I then have to change the colours on it by turning on the bulbs and turning off the bulbs, which I don't want, and start to manipulate it by literally once again turning on and off the bulbs. We have to make it up picture by picture until we've got a long sequence uh, of, of whatever we want to do. There are over 10,000 light bulbs on the screen, and so there's an awful lot of light bulbs to turn on and off. But once we've created the whole animation sequence, we then have to send it over to Piccadilly Circus. We do this by sending it down a telephone line. And they're in lights, pretty good. Mind you, they needed a few thousand light bulbs and a computer to turn them on and off. But here at the SOS control desk, we've made our own version. It's simpler, but just as impressive. At least we think so, anyway. It's computer controlled, and to make it flash, I just have to press SOS and return, and away it goes. Who needs to go to Piccadilly? I don't even know where it is. Anyway, if you've got a computer and a control box like this, Perhaps you could try putting your name in lights. Should grab someone's attention. And believe it or not, in nature, creatures draw attention to themselves by flashing their own lights. What sort of creature is this? In fact, each one of those flashes is a beetle called a firefly, and they're usually found in hot countries. There's the male flashing away. Who's he flashing at? Oh yes, the female. Spot the difference. Pictures like these are taken with a special camera which sees in the dark. 
And that scientist is testing if there's a message in the flash. He flashes, and there's a reply. It's getting closer. No doubt about that. Well, what does it all mean? See if you can figure it out from the next bit. That's a female glowworm. It's another kind of beetle. That's the male. Oh, what do you think? It's not just beetles that glow in the dark. There are luminous mushrooms, glowing starfish, and flashlight fish. So how do they make this light? Those two chemicals were taken from fireflies, and when mixed together, you get chemical light. Now this is my own secret code. I'm sending a message to a friend. It says, get the dinner on, okay? Now you get a good beam of light from this torch, but the best beams of light come from the sun. Can you see how the light is breaking through the clouds? And there again, streaming through the windows. This is a bit wet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's coming up now. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. What are you oh. Doing? No, sit down. Oh, no, I've got a very important scientific oh. point to make. No, sit down. What? No, look, yeah. look, listen. What? If I put my hand in front of the in front of the light, stop the light, it makes a shadow. Oh, calm, man. Just sit down. No, I mean, look, but in the film, I want to see No, this look, bit. because light travels in a straight line. What? Whatever you put in front of it comes out the same shape. I can't see the film. Can you come and sit down, please, Carmen? No, look, if I get closer and Carmen. further away, size changes. It's sit. interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's fascinating. Now sit down. What's wrong with you? I've missed it now. Sorry. lovely show. Thanks, Kate and Lizzie. Now, how about this? Strange things happen in mirrors. Watch the picture. Now, you get that effect because of the reflection. But you don't need mirrors like this to get reflections. Next time you're out and about, 
Why don't you look for reflections? sort of thing they do in the hairdressers. Show you the back of your head. Show you how to cut the hair properly. Hmm. Not bad at all. The trouble with mirrors is they make you look the wrong way round. Look. They've very kindly given me a hat with my name on it. Just so I know who I am. Thanks. There you are. You can read it. Paul. Now look in here. It's back to front. Hmm. So how would I see it the right way round? Well, this is the real me. This is my first reflection. And this is the second reflection, the reflection of my reflection. Well, of course, you probably don't need a hat like this to tell you who you are. But if you wanted to try it, all well, you need is a couple of sticky labels. And you could write your name on it. And a plastic mirror, like this. Now, these plastic mirrors are great because you can bend them without them breaking. And not all words look backwards in the mirror. I mean, try this one. Let's have a look at that in the mirror. There it is. Still the same way round. Of course, you could try this for yourself. But you'd have to think quite carefully about which letters you can use. Try cutting one of these flexi mirrors with a pair of scissors and then sticking them together like this. And if you put a couple of uh, torch bulbs on there and then look through the gap at the other mirror like this, you get a really weird effect, I can tell you. And here's another thing you can do with mirrors. Mm. Bouncing the sunlight off them can be used to send messages. It's great in sunny countries like this. This is actually Afghanistan. There, you can see the reply way in the hills. Why do you think there are two mirrors? Well, that sort of thing's okay, as long as you've got plenty of sunshine to rely on. But how could you send a message when the sun's gone in, even over just a short distance? Now, there's a problem for you. Try and make something that will turn a light on and off and send a message to your chums. See you next time. He's definitely the best looking. <laughs> no, he's not. You are. <laughs>